So there's a lot of hot, glowy things in the universe. I think we can all agree on that. There's there's also a lot of not hot and glowy things in the universe, but that's an episode about dark matter and dark energy. And the processes in space that generate light and affect light and modify light are actually quite different than the processes here on Earth that generate light and reflect light. Here on Earth, we basically rely on the sun for all illumination, at least physically and biologically. And what we perceive in the world around us, like the blue skies and white fluffy clouds and green grass, is due to mostly scattering and reflecting, uh, uh, interacting with that raw light coming from the sun. And this is very different than the processes that generate light in space. For, for example, like the reason we have blue skies is there is white light coming from the sun. This white light strikes our atmosphere and our atmosphere is made up of mostly nitrogen and oxygen. And the nitrogen and oxygen molecules are much, much smaller than the typical wavelengths of visible light. And this causes the some of the colors in that white light to separate. When they interact with those tiny little molecules, the blue light tends to get thrown off to the sides while the red light goes on through. So if white light is illuminating the whole thing, then the whole sky gets brushed with blue from all that scattered light. And then white minus blue is yellow. And that's how we perceive a yellow sun. If you make those particles bigger, like if you make them say the size of a raindrop, you get a different kind of scattering process of light interacting with those raindrops. And that in that case, the light gets reflected and scattered in all directions for every frequency very roughly. And so this is why we see the clouds as white because they are taking that white light of the sun and bouncing it all all over in all sorts of different directions. But if you get too much of those little droplets all piled together and it's too thick and the light can't even make it through it at all, like in the instance of a storm cloud, then you will see a black or dark gray cloud rather than the white, even though it's the exact same thing. So we see so many examples of scattering and reflection and refraction and all sorts of interactions with a source of light. But in space, and this happens in space too, you may see, say, a a blue nebula if you see a blue nebula, then this nebula is made of you know, hydrogen and helium, all the usual stuff. And it is itself reflecting and scattering light from another object from a nearby star, much the same way our own sky reflects and scatters light from a nearby star known as the sun. And this is why we see a blue nebula. But there are so many things in space that generate their own light. And perhaps the most important source of radiation in space is what we call black body radiation. Now don't don't get me started on the name, all right? It's it's late 1800s physicists not knowing anything about the universe devised various experimental setups for studying hot glowy things they gave a name to the device that they used they called it a black body because it was painted black and it was not body shaped it just just whatever okay but black body radiation is the radiation given off by things that are made of lots of atoms and molecules that are all wiggling around and bouncing against each other and twisting and flexing and bending, doing all sorts of complicated things. If you're emitting light as a black body, then the hotter you are, the higher your temperature, the more energy your atoms and molecules have to bounce off each other and wiggle and jiggle and dance and do all the other stuff. And so generally, the higher frequency of light you will emit. 
More energy in you, more energy emitted in radiation. But you also emit all sorts of other wavelengths. You also emit some lower frequency stuff, a little bit of high frequency stuff. This is the characteristic signature of what we call a black body spectrum. The amount of light emitted by a, a hot glowing thing. So for example, for example, I am a black body. So are you. We are made of atoms and molecules that are wiggling and jiggling around right now. They are emitting radiation right now. But they're not, they don't have enough energy to emit radiation in the visible. Instead, they're a little bit lower energy than visible. They're just beneath the reds, a little bit redder than red. They are infrared. This is why night vision goggles work because we are glowing. We are glowing in the infrared. We're even glowing a little bit in the microwave. And this is one of the coolest things. You can take a, a satellite dish. You know, the, you know, the satellite dish for like satellite TV? Those are actually communicating with their satellites using microwave radiation. And they are sensitive to the microwave emission from the human body. So there are actually Science Center demos that, that play around with this concept where you point a dish down a hallway and people walk by and you hook the dish up to its detector up to like something that makes bleeps and bloops and people walk by and go whoop whoop because it's, it's, it's not exactly that sound. Don't worry about it. It, because it can detect the microwave emission from our bodies. And stars, black bodies. Our own sun, black body. And the number one source of light in the universe by far, something we call the cosmic microwave background. This is the leftover light from the very early universe, black body. Black body, but that one's a super cold one. It's a super cold one. It's just like three degree, three Kelvin, three degrees above absolute zero. So it's all the way down there, way far down in the microwaves. We hardly ever get to see it unless you have special microwave detectors. And uh, this, and so black body radiation, the radiation due to hot things has a very, very characteristic signature, and it is by far the number one source of light in our universe. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Ask a Spaceman. Feel free to like and subscribe. Tell your friends about it or not, whatever. It's cool. And uh, go to patreon.com slash to help support the show. See you next week. Thanks. Bye.